to Peter for for leading these sessions over over Future Skills Week. Um, as Peter said, he's going to do a bit of a recap from from some of the focus of of the first session, and then get get really stuck in and try and apply some of the learning that that Peter shared. Um, storyboarding and, and looking at your script and how you would actually piece the, the video CV together. So thanks very much, Peter. Uh, over to okay. you. Okay, um, thanks for coming back, everybody. So um, we'll get straight into it here because there's a fair bit to do in this one. So a bit of a quick walk through what we'll do. We'll have a recap on workshop one. Then we're going to have a look at reviewing some of the scripts. So if you could um, make sure that you have your, your script in whatever shape it is on hand there, we'll be asking for a few volunteers to, to give us a bit of a read through there. Um, then we're doing an introduction to storyboarding, which is really setting the, the, the rationale for why why it's a good idea and, and then how you can start going about it. Then we're going to start with, uh, then we're going to have some interactive storyboarding breakout groups um, where we will give you 15 minutes um, in groups, probably of, of two, um, to talk to each other about your scripts and try and come up with a few shot ideas. I'll dip into each of those groups as that 15 minute session um, develops and, and answer any questions or give you a few pointers as well. Then we'll go into starting to, to gather the assets that you'll need whenever you're starting to think about editing. So music selection, a few pointers there, details of the, the resources of ours that you'll get access to um, and some do's and don'ts whenever it comes to music selection. Stock footage resources that are available, um, both free and um, uh, the, the subscription packages that we have that we can give you access to as part of the, the, the processes on the one-to-one -one consultations. Then we'll do a little bit about editing your video um, and then uh, a little bit of a guide of, of what the preparation you'll need to do before the one-to-one -one sessions. Again, similarly with the scripts, you know, there's no expectation by the time that we get to the one-to-one -one sessions that you have even started editing at that stage probably. Um, I mean, what I'd be keen to, to focus on in those sessions, if you have started editing, great, but um, if you haven't, if we've got everything to a point where you know, you've know you selected the music that you want to use, you've identified a few stock clips, um, you've got your script in order, then I can help you sort of step through what the process would be to actually put that thing together for you. And then, of course, we'll finish the end with some questions. But as before, if you want to pop any questions into the chat, we'll do our best to deal with them as and when they come up. So a little bit of a quick recap on workshop one. As we mentioned there about this is a three-step process and we're at stage two now. Um, workshop one, we very much focused on the script and the narrative style bit. This bit we've just run through the agenda for and it finishes with the one-to-one -one consultation. As you'll see, the smiley faces were accurate and there are people who have dropped off at this stage of the process. So. Thank you to everybody who's stuck with it, and um, and you're already going to be at an advantage to the people who have decided not to come along for whatever reason. So, um, so that's that's the, the the workshop outline. So one of the earliest things we did was, you know, trying to put ourselves in our audience's shoes and understand what their daily frustrations were and what the problems we were offering that. Um, to, to their, those daily frustrations and how we frame that to make sure that they would pay attention to us. And, and I suppose that's true of anything, any sales process or any recruitment process. It's understanding the audience and, and trying to frame the conversation in a way that's going to be relevant and impactful for them. We also covered understanding the purpose of the CV, video CV, and this isn't the thing that's going to get you the job. It's going to be the thing that's going to get you another half an hour with the company or the HR manager or the department manager that you're trying to impress. And um, so that was a, a guide to making sure you didn't feel the need to put too much information into your initial script. And um, then we talked about the different storytelling arcs from Keanu Reeves and Impending Disaster to Car Share to Rocky and, and highlighting that the triumph of the underdog is probably the one that was most relevant for you. And then we took a little bit of a look at a few different storytelling styles, leaning on a tried and tested model from Pixar, um, which you'll remember we went through the Toy Story one there, and then going through the, the, the 60 second pitch structure, which is probably more relevant for this, but yeah, no, like whatever one you've decided to go with will will work whenever we whenever we get to the end of the process. Then we talked about how the narrative style would go. We did a little bit of a poll on that, and it was 50-50 in terms of piece the camera and voiceover, um, which was great because that's our suggested approach because it brings across that human element that you want in order to make the process work properly and really show your personality and your how you're going to be a good cultural fit for the organization that you're trying to impress. 
Okay, so that's all that we covered in workshop one. Um, as you'll remember, we asked you to go away and have a think about your scripts um, and see what shape you could get them into by today. As I mentioned at the previous session, there's no expectation that, that you would have an absolutely 100% refined script at that stage. If you have, very well done, because if we were doing a commercial project starting on Tuesday working on a script, we wouldn't have it done by today either. So it's really about getting that first words down on paper, I suppose, and, and understanding is it powerful and impactful enough? Does it really get across the message that we want to get across? So this is the fun part now. We need um, a few volunteers, ideally three of you, um, to put your hands up there if, you wouldn't, if you're willing to be the first one to jump in. Um, to read us your script and get a bit of feedback from the group. Um, and this is a very useful exercise in terms of helping you refine your script. Um, and if you're not happy reading it, um, we would prefer if you did, because ultimately you're going to have to when it comes to making your video CV. Um, if you're not happy reading the script, then if you want to pop a copy of it into the into the chat, then we can we can I'd be I can I can read it out for you or whatever you want to do. So does anybody want to, to volunteer to share the details of their script with us? Don't all rush at once. Hi, Peter. Um, I don't mind sort of sharing a little bit. Um, it's obviously okay, perfect. Perfect. Um, a little disclaimer up front is that, you know, I'm only a first year in psychology. So when I was doing my script, I wanted it to be a little bit more generic because at the moment yes. I'm applying for part time and other jobs. So I'm not at the end of a career where I can go, listen, I know exactly who this is targeted to. It's much gotcha. more of a, I just want to here, this is who I am and a little bit of background about me. So you know what I mean by it's not as targeted as I'd like it to be, but it's just kind of an introduction to my personality a little. No, that, that's great, really. And I mean, the context always helps in terms of, you know, when you're reviewing the script again through the audience's eyes, I suppose, and, and understanding that it's a fairly broad audience you'd be targeting with us. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I have a wee script here. Do you want me just to read a section of it or anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so I've just started off with, hi, my name is Julie Graham, and I'm currently an undergrad at Ulster University studying psychology. And I'm actively looking for part-time work, a placement, or even a volunteer position alongside my studies. I wanted to forward you this video CV alongside my written CV, as I am a huge advocate of modern technology and feel that it should be utilized at every opportunity. Plus, I hope that this format can convey my personality in a way that paper simply cannot. Um, I then go into a wee bit of background here. Okay. So that you may have gathered from this visual that I am a mature student, but I'm one who has amassed a huge amount of real world experience. Being a typical, I know everything kind of teenager, I left school early without any qualifications to pursue a career in dance and performing arts. Now with hindsight, this is a crazy idea, However, I do not regret it. I got to follow my dreams while I was young. I won multiple awards, performed in shows, and I've taught children throughout the country. But alongside this creative outlet, I have become self-employed, did my own taxes, admin. I had to become commercially savvy and generate my own income. I've done publicity, PR, and gained massive confidence in public speaking, speaking <laughs> and communication. Um, I've worked very hard in dance, but I've also took jobs in retail, warehousing and secretarial work. And also I could return to education with maturity and motivation. I have achieved my GCSEs, diplomas in performing arts and social sciences, and have now reached my personal dream of attending university. And I simply love it. So to sum up, what I really wish to convey is a few characteristics that I would bring to your organization. I am extremely driven, highly competitive and conscientious. I'm creative, articulate, and love to work with the public. I highly believe in respect, manners, punctuality, and above all, a positive outlook to my work and life. My new pathway in psychology is one where I'm passionate about research, teaching, and simply understanding the human condition. So finally, I just want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and we'd be delighted if you would consider my application, or perhaps keep me in mind for any further opportunities within your company. My email and mobile number are on my CV, and I would be absolutely thrilled to hear back from you. So thank you very much. That's very, very good. No problem. Um, yeah, that's really good, Julie. I really like that. There's, there's a lot of really, really good stuff in there. 
um, and it, and you do get your personality and the 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 outline of all your experiences are fantastic because you know as we talked about at the first session, all the academic stuff and all and 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 the the tick box and exercise can be done with the paper CV, whereas um, the, the video CV is an opportunity to show. The, the personality skills and the traits that you have that employers are looking for. That section where you talked about being driven, competitive, conscientious, articulate, creative, and, and loved working with the public. You know, they're 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 all ticking boxes for for employers, I think, in terms of the, the personalities they're looking for whenever they're going about recruiting. One thing I would say is what I would do is I would get that bit about you know being driven and competitive and conscientious and articulate in at the very start okay yeah um because i think that's the hook okay yeah that, Open that, that yeah. makes people think okay i'm interested in this lady here she sure. she knows what i'm looking for okay. in terms of the personality traits and, and 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 once you've said those things there's an expectation that that you will prove them and i think you do with the examples you give Okay. About about the dancing experience, about um, the the various work experiences that you've had, um, the articulate bit answers itself. To be honest, in the way that you you deliver that script. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I'm I'm my the way my brain just works in images now. So um, uh, you know, as you're saying those things, I'm thinking about you know, shots and stuff that could be used to, to highlight those things. It'd be useful to spend a bit of time on that up the storyboarding section with you. And, and, um, and, and, and I think you'll find the section in this around the stock footage resources that you'll be able to use. The, the quick, punchy nature of the way you've written that script allow, lends itself very, very well to shots changing very quickly. Good, good. Um, and, and, re, and, you know, using sort of visual hooks and visual mechanisms to to reinforce the points. So that idea of driven, competitive, conscientious, articulate, great with the public, you know, I could see those as we're, we're storyboarding already here, but but I could see those as, you know, we find an image or, or footage or footage that supports that statement and just have that big text, you know, coming up on the screen as you say those words. Um, yeah. Which takes the pressure off you in terms of having to memorize that script for that bit, because as we talked about, that's the bit where your voice is there but your face isn't of course yeah um so yeah that's really good i'm really looking forward to jumping into that storyboarding session i think there's some really really good stuff there no problem i just am always a little conscious that my background don't you know it's a little contrary if i sent a cv to people they're a bit oh she's just a silly ditzy dancer but i am actually quite <laughs> like, you know, into psychology and things so it's just a wee bit hard to balance the two kind of areas but it's just trying to Sell yeah, and, and there, is, there is, there is, there is. I mean, I, I have this conversation actually fairly regularly, um, and I'm not sure what career it is you're trying to pursue. But, but um, in my experience of working for 22 or 23 years in marketing jobs, the best marketers and salespeople that I've ever come across have had a background in psychology. Good. Because, yeah. because they're, you know, that that you know that part about understanding your audience and walking in your customers' shoes and trying to understand the impact of words and actions on people. Um, that's, you know, that's what you do. That's what psychology is, essentially. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and so that's why it lends itself very well to those sort of career paths, because it, I mean, in any management role, I suppose, where you're managing other humans, it's, it's, a, it's a very useful skill to have. <laughs> okay, is there anybody else that wants to Give us um, a little bit of a run through their script. As I said, it doesn't have to be absolutely finalised or nailed down yet. Just if, if, if somebody's interested in hearing some feedback on exactly what they've got so far. Jackie's got a bit of a love for psychology graduates going on, I think. I think there's a bit of bias there. Well, I do look after school of psychology yeah. and, isn't that right, Julie? And, um, <laughs> well, let's balance it out, guys. What about Sean or Letitia or, or Camilla? Or, and Zoe, you're, just in, you're just in through the door, so um, anybody else, like, even an outline of what, your, of, what, of what your script's about?
it's always best to volunteer, but I'm not completely opposed to the idea of volunteering someone. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be okay if you are even if it's only a wee bit off? It doesn't have yes, to be yes, the film no, thing I mean, that you laid out. It could be the introduction or... No, it could be the introduction or it could be, you know, a, a, sex, a section that you're, you know, the best bit is a bit that you're not sure about. It is, yeah. Do something that scares you every day, isn't that it? <laughs> I mean, ultimately, you're going to have to do this. If you're, if you're going to follow this three. You know, we're, we're going to have to do this, so. No, we're not going to get any other volunteers, are we? Okay, well, maybe, um, maybe we'll leave that there. I mean, I th hopefully people got some um, information that can help them form their own scripts from the conversation that we just had with Julie and, and the walk through hers. Um, so if we, oh, go on, Letitia, good. Great. Hi. Hi, it? Um, so I don't have like a proper script the way Julie did. I sort of have bullet points and like things I want to include. Okay, that's fine. Absolutely fine. So I'm, I'm still working on the introduction, but it's basically just, you know, hello, my name is Letitia Arney. Uh, I'm a first year undergraduate student at Ulster University studying food and nutrition. Um, and my work experience is um, teaching, so I did both coaching and like um, classroom assistant role in science. So I've done things like designing and implementing lesson plans, like mixed ability groups, ranging from like introducing basics to refining skills and improving performance. Um, I've confidently managed classes of up to 20 participants. Um, performed like continuous risk assessments and took measures to reduce any risks, regularly completed self-evaluations to identify weaknesses to address and action plans. And then also there's like my volunteering. So I fundraised for and raised awareness of a range of charities, including Women's Aid, Care for Cancer, Action Mental Health and Air Ambulance and I, through organizing charity events, backpacking and fundraising activities. Um, and then I go on to talk about how um, that, you know, helped me develop my interpersonal skills. Okay. Um, through, like, having to manage the intricacies of collaboration with multiple organizations. Mm -hmm. um, and then a little about my IT skills. So, um, about, like, Microsoft Office. Um, I've been improving that one. I was watching all of Jackie's um, <laughs> lessons today and everything. <laughs> um, and then as well as like using like st statistical package for the social sciences, like having experience with that and like okay. mathematical and, and analytical abilities. Um, sort of like something like that. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, I mean, there's, there's, there's some, again, there's, it's all, they're all very good points. It's, it's, it's it, it it it's a case of, of spending a bit of time now trying to refine those into the um the statements that are going to make the difference. And for me, the thing that makes the video CV different from the paper CV is answering the the so what or the why. So um you know you, there there's 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 several things in it I think and there are, are potentially really powerful messages and really good hooks. In terms of you know your your obvious people management experience, I mean that's going to be relevant for employers. You know managing large groups in those classroom and coaching sort of sessions um, is is a skill to lean into. I think in terms of you know crowd control <laughs> um, and and being in those classroom and teaching environments and answering the question, you know, highlighting that experience, but also why why is it that you enjoy doing that? Why why did you pursue that um, experience. Um, there's the performance development part. There's also you, you, there's some great volunteering experience in there, which is always great to see because it is, as we talked about the other day, that goes back to 
know, demonstrates initiative and commitment and discipline and all those things, as well as giving people a sort of look behind the mask a wee bit as to the, as to the kind of human that we are. Um, so rather than maybe just listing the volunteering experience, I would potentially start that by saying why it is, why is it that you you know you have you have a breadth of volunteering experience but, or or charity experience, but why do you do that? I mean, you don't have to. Nobody has to. Um, what is it about doing that 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 makes you do it? Um, and it is it goes back to your teaching and coaching. It's, it's the same thing, probably. I'd imagine without putting words in your mouth, it's it's that desire to help others and, and watch them grow and be involved in, in helping them develop. Um, and I think framing, it, you're, it's, it's saying exactly the same thing as you've said, but in a way that is more personable, maybe, than, than simply you know, talking about the various organizations that, that you've worked with, particularly relevant to the charity experiences. You know, we're able to process quite a lot of more information than we give ourselves credit for. Um, so for example, over, if you could put together a paragraph of text around why you're involved in all those char in that charity work, you can at the same time, the, the imagery that you use while you're saying that can be details of the charities that you've worked with. So you mentioned Women's Aid and the Cancer Charities, you know, because then the viewer can not only, is not only hearing, the, the why you do the charity work and getting the feel for the kind of person that you are, but is also being presented with the evidence um, to show the charities that you have worked with. Um, and I think you don't have to say all of that. If you can combine, you know, if you can, instead of putting all of that into words, talking about the why and then talking about the charities, which might take 30 seconds, if you can talk about the why and use the visuals to highlight the charities, you might condense that down to 15. You've still got all the information in, um, but it shortens it. Um, similarly to what, it, to what I said with Julie, I would avoid a start that starts by, you know, hello, I am. Um, because the first, it's, it's like, I mean, you know, you all know this, but Julie, I'll probably know this and, and from, from, the, from the psychology background, you know, we, we're, we're starting to form an impression about <clears throat> the people we meet within the first few seconds. And, and particularly with video, um, it's very easy to walk away from someone. Um, so if there isn't a hook at the start, it, it can be that you can lose people very, very early. So, whereas I said to Julie, you know, talk about the, those characteristics of Julie mentioned driven, competitive, conscientious, articulate. You know, you from 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 what you've outlined in those bullet points there, I'd be starting with, you know, I am a person who loves working with others and teaching and coaching and I mean these, these words need refined, but you know, teaching and coaching and training and watching other people grow and working with teams and and towards a, a you know. A common end goal. I think that's because that is, is is very relevant to whatever whoever your potential employer is, and that's again as with Julie's, that's the thing that makes that first few seconds very engaging and makes the the viewer think, okay, I'm going to stick around here because if that's the start, there's bound to be more interesting stuff coming later. Is that helpful? Yeah, thank you. That's great. Um, okay. I'll, okay. I'll well, yeah. Okay. No, I mean, but but congratulations to both Julie and Natasha, or uh, first for 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 volunteering, and secondly for for the, for the work they've done on that. There's some really good stuff there, and it's the it's a very good foundation. Um, and hopefully the others have, have have learned something about their own scripts so far, based on 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 the feedback that we we were able to give the two ladies there. So. That's very good. Yeah, really pleased with how that went. So um, if we move on then, um, the next stage is going to be the storyboarding. But as we, we, we touched on that a little bit in some of the feedback there with Julia and Letitia. But um, in this section, I want to just give you some context around why storyboarding is important for people, including myself, when I came to video for the first time. You know, there's, there's a temptation to get the camera out of the bag and to hit record. 
um, a little too early or start trolling stock music sites and start trolling footage sites and picking things without really thinking about it. So um, it, it might seem that it's holding the process up, but in fact, it does exactly the opposite. So why would we storyboard? Um, well, there's the old adage, you know, if we fail to plan, we plan to fail. So, you know, if we just, if we got, if we got in the car and just started driving, um, where are you, where, where are we going? Like, where are we going to end up? Nobody knows. You just, you end up going around in circles most of the time. Um, and you don't really go anywhere. But, but if you sit down the night before and think, okay, I need to go to Dublin tomorrow. Um, and you plan your route and you think about where you're going to stop. Um, and you think about, you know, what you're going to eat when you stop. And you think, you know, you think, of, you think, and what time do we do I need to leave in order to get there? You know, that, you, you're, it's going to be a more efficient journey. The previous way, you're just going to end up wasting a load of petrol or diesel. <laughs> the other way, you know, you're going to get there in the most time efficient and cost efficient way. So, so that's why storyboarding, a very foundation of it is a good idea. It does help with the creative process because it, it, it helps to develop the ideas. You know, once you start writing down shots that you, that you might use to accentuate some of the points that you've, you, you've got in your script, um, you very rarely end up using the first one that you put down because the nature of getting into that sort of storyboarding process means you, you start you start getting creative then you start using the right part of your brain for that process and, and you start to be able to visualize things which goes on to the third point there it allows you to visualize the end result once you start thinking about the footage that goes along with the line in the script, you can sort of start to see a picture of it. It's really useful actually when you're doing this as part of a collaborative project. This isn't a collaborative project because you're doing your own videos even. But if you're working on a commercial video project or any development of any content for marketing purposes, um, it, it's very useful because it means everybody gets bought into the idea. Um, and it's very helpful in getting feedback from others then because you could say, when I say this, I'm thinking about using an image of this, and then inevitably some good ideas come forward from that. It does save time before the edit um, because ultimately when you've got a very detailed script and storyboard that's been through the mill a few times and you're confident that every word justifies inclusion in the script and the shots and imagery that you're going to use are, are correct, then the edit becomes a bit of a painting by numbers exercise because you're essentially going, you know, one to five seconds, this is what I need, five to ten seconds, this is what I need. And you, it becomes much easier to step through the edit that way. And the other thing that does is then it reduces the amount of rework required because you've, you've poked and prodded and tested that script and storyboard. You're, but by the time you start the edit, you're very confident that it's in the shape it needs to be in. So whenever you watch your, the, the, the end result, um, there are always a few tweaks to be made because something that you thought would work doesn't really work as well as you thought. You might want to switch it out. But it's generally more than 90% there first run, um, which just saves time. Whenever you just jump in and start grabbing footage and grabbing music and sticking in little audio bits um, and it doesn't all come together, it, you tend to tends to involve a hell of a lot of rework uh, and that's where it gets frustrating and um, where you're, you just can't seem to get to the, the place that you want to get to because it hasn't just been tested enough before you started so i mean how to do it there i mean you know you, you look up storyboarding and um all there there are various ways to do it you know if you're if you're when you, once you start getting down to animation and the, the film and tv production you know that storyboards are, are, are sketched and you'd have a storyboard artist who would be sketching, you know, set layouts and positions of people. We don't need, I mean, I don't do, we don't do that um, because it takes too much time and you don't need to, it's beyond what we need to do for our client. So this is a copy of a slide from the first workshop, which shows, I mean, essentially you create a Word document or, or whatever word processing software you're using and you break your script down into the individual sentences and then you decide what footage you're going to use that's going to go along with that sentence. So we talked about it with Julie's, for example, and um, you know, she might have those words driven, competitive, conscientious, articulate, you know, enjoys being in the company of people. Um, and that's individual, you know, 
an image that says that you know competitive could be maybe an image from her dancing experience and um, working with the general public can be a stock shot of of a busy street and um, um you know uh, uh, with with big text titles on the, on the on the screen so that's where you start to, to sort of detail all those things out and what you end up with then is a is a as a word document with all of that with those three columns the script the footage and the comment and you outline whether that's going to be you're going to deliver that piece to camera or whether you need an image or uh, a piece of footage to support it and what piece of footage you're looking for okay and there are three elements to consider whenever you're putting together your storyboard your script your narrative style which um you've, you've decided on already the supporting footage and think about stock footage and the stuff that you have in your own library whether that be photos and videos on your camera roll from your phone or whether it be stock resources that you're going to go and get and then you've got how you're going to use text on screen lower thirds for anybody that doesn't know where the little um, graphic elements that come up and introduce your tell you your name and, and your course of study or your 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 qualifications or your job role or whatever that may be and i suppose going back to the feedback on the script you know both julie and letitia started with hello i'm letitia or julie and i am studying the use of those lower thirds in the text on screen can help do that job for you because that can come up and i can say letitia or annie um and your your course of study or whatever or whatever you think the relevant piece of information underneath that needs to be and that can help to shorten your video because People can read that while they're listening to you rather than you having to say it. So you might think I'm only cutting five seconds out, but you know, it's that it's back to the question from the first workshop, you know, is is every does every word justify inclusion? And those five seconds don't. At no point during the video do you have to say your name or what your job role is or what course you're studying, because you can use a graphic element to do that and take five seconds out of your video immediately. So um that's one of the things to consider. We're going to go into the interactive storyboarding session, and um, this is banned. Um, what we don't want, what, what the best way to storyboard is to think not of the restrictions that you have or what you have access to, but the, the very best way that you can tell your story. And the very best way that you can get that message across down to the very specific clip or image that you're looking for um, and and what that does is it means you end up with in a, the, the 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 best possible storyboard that you can create leaving aside any restrictions that there might be what you when you start getting into okay now let's see what's available you might have to make little compromises on things you won't have to make many as uh, when we when we go through the um the the stock footage section later you, you'll see this but um we, we go into this interactive storyboarding session now what we're going to do is we're going to create uh break breakout groups um yeah yeah do you want me to just say a wee bit about how it works peter or yes if you would brian that'll be great all right guys so um I mean, although we, these guys will be familiar with breakout groups because they've been using Blackboard for Collaborate for the last year. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start the, the breakout groups in a minute. And um, it's going to be a group of three and a group of two. So Julie, Sean and Zoya in one group and then Camilla and Letitia in another group. Um, what about timing, Peter? You... We'll, we'll give 10 minutes for this, if you would mind, because we're running a little bit over. So um, yeah. if we can give 10, 10, 10 minutes for this and then we'll come back and, and do the last do the last little bit and I as I said I'll jump into each of the groups for a couple of minutes I'll leave you a few minutes to get yourself sorted and, and then I'll jump in to each of the individual groups and answer any questions that you have okay okay so they're, they're ready to they're ready to I'm ready to start the groups here is there anything else you want to say Peter or are you happy for the guys no. to just go ahead and discuss no our, ha hop, hop happy storyboard happy. together yeah yeah that works for me yeah okay so it's 11.09 on my clock so um We'll finish at 11.19, but I'm going to hit start now. Okay. okay. You can see them connecting into the... Yep. That's them in. Okay. Very good.
Yeah. So can you guys see on the right hand side there and in, in, um, the, we're, we're in the main room? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I suppose so, that somebody needs to stay in the main room, don't they? Or do they? Not necessarily, because if any of us or all of us go into a group, you can always just come back. You know, you can you can leave it to go back into the main room. So, um, yeah. Julie, that was, that was good. very good. That was good. I'm I'm glad. Um, I'm glad Julie and Latisha, you yeah, know, were brave good. enough to share. Julie's yeah. good girl, like so. Yeah. Sounds good. Julie's very good. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously as a performing a person who, yeah, I'm a, you know, the whole thinking through what and and even, you know, what even the the visuals, I'm sure that's something she would, you know, she would think a lot yeah, about yeah, too. Would be okay on front of camera, I would think, yeah, because yeah, of her background. Yeah. You could tell you the could difference say, between the two, you know, well, you and the even, you could even, and just reading it out. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say, Jackie. You could hear just the way that um, Julie delivered it was very, you know, comfortable and relaxed mm -hmm. and confident, you know. No, that's good. I'm glad. Um, I had sent another wee quick email out at the start of this session just to say, mm -hmm. hi, guys, just to remind you, this session starting yeah. now. Here's the link. And then, then I saw Zoya popped on. Zoya, yeah, come in. So that was good. I was glad I did that. So I'll do yeah. that again, actually, just before the two o'clock session, just as a wee prompt, yeah. and send them the actual yeah, individual yeah. link, just to make it easy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You see there on the, you see the way we're listed under moderators. Yes. On the on the on the breakout groups, you'll see the wee three circle with the three dots in it. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So if you click that, that's where you can. Jump into group one or group two. Jump into, I think okay. so, anyway. Okay, no, I'll I'll do that right. mm -hmm. And then once you're in, I think there's a button leave group, or something that'll bring you in the main room, and then you go, or, or it might even from that, it might allow you to switch directly into another group. I just can't remember off the top of my head, Peter, but it'll be okay. there anyway. Okay, I'll jump into group one here now. I'm back in a few minutes. Okay, no see ya. There he goes. Um, That's working really well. I'm really. I know really we. Good. You see, we done this so much uh, in Unlock You. Yeah. You know, you were doing it every session, and it was big, bigger groups, so it was a bit more frantic. But it was it. But that going into semester one, that meant EAs especially. You know, we you done well. Not everybody did fourteen events, but you done you done multiple events using it, and it was a bit of a baptism of fire. But then after that, you were. I you realize it. It, it was quite simple, you know, quite simple, mm -hmm. you know, random allocation. And then what, how many, it asked me how many do you want in a group? Mm -hmm. And then that's it. So, um, no, that's good. No, it's worked well. Yeah. Okay, it was great. Sorry, it was... Okay, it is. Oh, there's oh, there's Rebecca. Rebecca joining. <laughs> well, we can pop her in. Too, uh, uh, okay, I will. I'll say to her and then pop her in. That's fine. Huh? Oh, reconnecting. Reconnecting. Oh. Oh, there. Inactive. Oh, I saw a few. Connection problems. Change. The Latisha's is actually pretty weak, but she's still. I know. I saw that. Um, Julie Emailing me, wanting me to um. What's this left the session, right? Okay. She must be trying to get. Aye. Julie was emailing me, going, any chance she could host. Um, Ali Hutchison's session at half eleven, and I was like, "Well, uh, I'm just coming no. out of the session at half eleven, and I've just delivered Why? back Microsoft sessions, just because she said she had a full on day." <laughs> and I'm like, I've had three full on days in a row where oh. I literally have not. Oh. I got my lunch yesterday at four o'clock because I had. So many sessions plus my vaccination to go to in the middle of. <laughs> I'm dealing with 
Bloody and I just went, and I, and I, you know what, I'm like, I get no to people. And I thought maybe she was under pressure for something. And I emailed her back and says, look, I can come, I'll, I'll jump into the session and take over from you and finish it off if you need to go and do something. And then she emailed me back and she says, oh, no, it's okay. It's just because I'm very busy. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, we're all very busy, Jimmy. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm not. Of course I will. <laughs> and I'd already yeah. promised Camilla that I would go to her because I'd set them up. So I'd promised her I'd pop into her session because I haven't got had a chance to go to Sarah's this week either. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, what were you going to uh, say? Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, I'm, uh, I'm dealing with sort of the procurement and, you know, because it's at this time that you have to get ready for next year with contracts yeah. and all that there. So we've always been a bit loose, you know, Damien was a bit more, things Things weren't as tight then, but now they are, and Angela wants to make sure we go through the right sort of processes, so it's VMOC and Albintegro, and and uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to have to go through a tendering competition in a f fairly short space of time, so I was telling, I was on with Albintegro yesterday, and then I told, I spoke to procurement this morning, Um. And they were offered us a great deal, but you still have to go through the process. Like, and that's what I was, uh, emailed Mara this morning, the girl who done the training, said, look, this is great and all, but um, I'm actually giving you notice of us cancelling our contract because I have to, because I only have 30 days from, I had it in my diary, I have 30 days from, uh, what day is this, Thursday, 30 days from Saturday to cancel, you know, the notice period that you have to give. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she's coming back to me in the background going, oh, I didn't expect this. I was like, but I have to cancel it because we're going to go through tender. And if I don't cancel, I'm in breach of the contract. Because if you don't cancel within 30 days, you're liable to pay for the next year. So, and I'm the customer, so please. <laughs> Just, yeah, but, um, but anyway, so, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what becomes of it. But the thing was with VMOC, we could go single supplier because there was no other competitor. And now there is, which is good for us. Um, but we didn't have to go to tender before because there was, there was no other yeah. product like it. Which there kind of is. Um, but I had a good chat with Angela yesterday and, and she's like, she just wants to do it the right way. And if that means it's going to cost a bit more, she's okay with that. And I'm like, okay, right. That's, that's good. Let's do it, do it the right way. But um, um, and then it's student of the year. Trying to sort it out. Oh, yes. for it. But it's all fine. It's all good. There's just a lot going on at the minute, you know. That's it. I mean, there's always a lot going on anyway. And then but it's the same as last year. Just it's kind of the same. Unlucky was obviously different. It was a bit later. Mm -hmm. They're spread out a bit more. Whereas this is like a big bang of a week. Um, see the VC. I haven't watched this video obviously because we no, made it with the VC. It, yeah. But I, I think basically what it is, what I heard yesterday afternoon was in a meeting was that it's going to be um, returned to, return to normality, return to normal, pending uh, public health completely uh, situation. Well, I think the thoughts are that look, you can't do uh, a mid normal. You can only on a campus. You can't. You can't. You can't really do a middle ground. And then with the eighteen plus is going to be vaccinated. Maybe the thoughts are, or the he will have he will have got plenty of advice from people that are predicting what's going to happen. But I think we're going to be in. I haven't heard yesterday we're going to be in Jordanstown for semester one. Really? Yeah, heard that. So you'll not be clearing out the offices. Well, that's what I heard yesterday. Now, I haven't watched what he said, but that's what I heard. And he did mention Jordan's time that we might have to use it for space because of social distancing. Like, it's all fast building, it's not really. I mean, so uh, I'm just thinking, Rebecca didn't come back in. No, she didn't. Um, no. So I, so we'll see what it says, but that's what I heard yesterday. Hmm. So. Interesting. Well, it means, I don't think it would mean that we'll come back to work as normal but the student experience would be a campus experience we'll obviously be on campus more as a result of that but i still think that during term we'll be on campus predominantly but there's still this is going to have a this is obviously yeah. going to have a permanent impact on how we operate you know well i hope so because i actually have found see when you're delivering the online sessions you get more student interaction 
Yeah, it's a, it's a balance, isn't it? Like you know, and it, and this will have had. We were talking about it. it was a it was a group about induction and welcome week, and and what what is difficult to fix? Say we are on campus, right? So, mm-hmm. um, but students now, if 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 part of induction is providing information, students will want that online. If they're coming on campus, they want to come on for an experience or a mm-hmm. or a, or a learn. You know, they don't now, if, anybody else talking at them. No, they don't. If it's there's about to get, it's probably a bit. It's a bit late. Time's up, it? actually, isn't it? Hmm? P- Peter's still in group two. I lost track of. Uh, I oh here, ten minutes ten, is up. Ten minutes is up. I'll wait till he comes back, as he's obviously still in group two. Yeah, well, he so, moved into uh, group two a wee while ago there. Just a wee minute ago, so I'll, I'll end it when he comes back. There's Rebecca. Uh, maybe... Hi, Rebecca. Hello. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. How are you? Not too bad. <laughs> You're having a few issues getting in there. Yes. Um, I was just about to ask. Um, there is a um, there is a two p.m. session, isn't there today? There is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought I had registered for it. Um, but I haven't. Um, I take it it's all booked out. Okay. It's just I've looked on Handshake and it's yep. and it's not there. No, that's yeah. Okay. No, you you have the choice, Rebecca. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jackie. No, I was going to say I did. You went to workshop one, didn't you, Rebecca? Yes. Um, I did. You not get an email from me? I emailed everybody from workshop one. Um, let me see. I'll just double check here. I, I'm just going to check, and I emailed there just a wee while ago again, just to say with the links. I know, you definitely I had have choice. I was finding some um email addresses. Right? No, I did. I've got Rebecca Somerville on the oh. list. Yes. Yeah, sorry, just got it there. Um, oh, yes. it went your student email and you're logging in under your, are you, are you logging in under your student email or? Yeah, it's yeah. It's just central, this one, you don't need to log in, sir. Oh, that's right, sorry. On this yeah. one, it's not Blackboard, it's not. Sorry, but, I, what but, I meant was I emailed to your student email, yes. just in case you were checking a Gmail account or something, Rebecca, so. Oh, yes, no, there's perfect, thank you, no, got it here, sorry, <laughs> just getting so no, many emails at the moment here, because I've got, um, I've got a couple of submissions for tomorrow. <laughs> Oh my goodness. There was so it is, otherwise I would have attended, was it you like this morning? Um but there was just a quick question here because I'm just doing a draft at the moment. Um sorry, <clears throat> just with it. And C four um is the video C V. Is this in place of a cover letter that you send That's out? That's a good question. <laughs> I like that question actually, because actually, sorry, I, I was, I was, I was thinking about this in session one. I was like, really, this is kind of replacing the cover letter rather than the CV, so the title's maybe slightly off. But I wouldn't say it's replacing it, but it probably is more of a of a replacement of a cover letter than a CV because it's because it's an in- intro. I would say, Rebecca. Yeah. But you know, but it's maybe something that could be picked up this afternoon, as as was said there. You have the choice of going this afternoon if that suits you better obviously to get the full the full so, session you know yeah yeah that there would be perfect just so i can just write okay. everything over and then just have it yeah but no just double check in there that there's perfect thank no you worries. and you've got the right, link okay now rebecca for for this afternoon yeah perfect thank you very much i'll see you later see you later All right, rebecca, Bye. Bye. okay everybody's everybody's back now Everybody's back. Okay, we'll crack on because I'm just conscious of time here. So, um, yes, some, some some good stuff there. And again, uh, as as with the scripts, you know, the 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 real nitty gritty of, of of putting this together and dealing with individual scripts and storyboards will come at the one to one session. So it's just about pre- preparing the information in advance of that. Um, what we're going to do now is talk about music, um, because music is is hugely important part of 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 the video that you make. So. Why it's important because it sets the mood, the tone, and the pace of your video. Whether people know that it's there or, or are paying attention to it or not, it has an influence on on how they will perceive your video. And um, it shortens your video too. Believe not, actually shortens your video, but but in pe- the perception of how long people are spending watching something um, is influenced by. Um, the audio track that you use and the fact that there is something going on there sort of distracts them from how long they're spending on, on watching it. And the other important part of it is it provides a basis for editing to your track. Best practice, and most of the video people I speak to will use the track to decide when 
shots change. So the beat of the track that you choose ends up becoming the thing that you edit to whenever you want um, shots to change or images to change or to switch back to you on camera. And 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 all, it's the it's the combination of all those things working together. Your voice, the music, and the images, and whatever text graphics you might decide to use. The combination of all those things together, just the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Then it, it adds to the effect and the impact that your video has. Okay, do not use commercial tracks. Um, we get asked all the time, um, not as often as we used to. Um, about we do a lot of work in the construction and engineering industry, and quite a lot of it is big boys' toys stuff with big excavators and loading shovels and stuff. And and the most the track we get requested most for, I'm showing my age here definitely, is um, ACDC Thunderstruck. Whenever you're whenever you're using those things, and it's just it's just a no. Um, first of all, it's illegal, and um, it'll cost you about somewhere between fifteen and twenty thousand pounds to license a commercial track for uh, for use on a, on a video. I don't think any of us want to spend that. Um, second of all, you'll get a copyright strike on social media and YouTube, so the video will be taken down um, uh, because it features a, a track that you don't have a license for. And that's really tightened up in the last couple of years. We've started to get, I've started to get, you know videos that you would record whenever you're at um, concerts on your mobile phone that you would then post on social media? I've had five emails in the last two months for concerts that happened five and six years ago saying, the audio's being removed. The audio's been removed from that video because it contains a track that you're not, you don't have permission to share. So, you, the, 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 and if the audio is removed in your video, by the time you've edited your video, you've only got one audio track. It's the combination of your voice and the music. So, if the audio track gets removed, your voice gets removed too. So it sort of defeats the purpose. And um, the other thing is from a from a perception point of view, it's basically you send the employers, hi, I think copyright theft's okay, um, which isn't a good starting point probably in, in your discussions with a, a, a new potential employer. Um, and will obviously be more significant in some areas than others, but but do just do not use it. Do not even be tempted to use it. Um, there is no need when I when you when I when you get take a bit of time and explore some of the stock music resources that are available, you will realize that there's actually no need. So what you need to use is royalty free music. Um, which is what it's called, which basically means that the, 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 the composer or the, the author of the track has, has licensed it to a site for commercial use. Um, so you, you pay a one-off fee or you access free stuff and, and you're good to go. Several different resources. Free YouTube Music Library. If you set up a YouTube account um, with your email address, you have access to the YouTube Music Library. There are literally thousands of tracks on there. Uh, most of them are rubbish, um, but you can find a little um, gem in there if you spend enough time on it. The other free resources, editing packages like iMovie, um, have a very limited number of music tracks that they will allow you to put over your video. Again, pretty low quality, not a lot of choice. Then you have pay as you go services where you pay per track. Things like Audio Jungle and Soundstripe would be two examples of those. Typically, you'll pay ten to fifteen dollars per track. Um, and then you have subscription services, which is what we have. So we have subscription services with Soundstripe and FilmPack, another couple are premium beat and Epidemic Sound. Basically, we pay a monthly subscription to these sites, and it means we have unlimited access to the music libraries. That's the access that will be given you um, as part of the the process. Um, of creating your one-to-one -one video. This is a screenshot from Soundstripe, and you'll see what they have as a playlists function. So um, with the, they have organized all their tracks within a playlist function, within playlist functions, and you can sort of have a search around and see what sort of mood, tone, instrument you, you're going for, um, and decide which one it is. Then when you go into each of the playlists, it lists the track, and you can sample them, so you can play the track in full, and decide um, what one you think is going to be is going to be best for you. And um, what we'll do at at the one to one, what I will ask you to do in advance of the one to one session is is have a uh, have a play around. You can access and and sample these tracks for free. And um, 
yeah, before you check out with the track you're and download it, you're obviously going to have to pay if you're not a member of the site. But what you can do in advance of the one-to-one -one session is create a Word document or something with some tracks that you've identified as potentially the ones you'd like to use. And then we can sign in, download the track for you, get the license and documentation, send that to you as well. So if you do upload it to YouTube and you ever get asked, you've got the license document that says you have permission to use it. Um, and you just go through those. The other thing, you don't have to use the playlist function. You can just filter by track and the menu there on the left hand side is all the different things you can filter by. Um, instrument, genre, characteristic, artist, playlist, vocals. So things to consider when you're choosing a track. How long is your video? Um, ideally, to, to save you having to mess around in the edit too much, you, you try and um, find a track that pretty much matches the length of your video. It won't always match it completely, but it's very close. Figure out how it will work with the audio. You can't have too much going on in the background sometimes. Um, and depending on the audience, depending on the pace, depend, you know, you'll, be, you'll decide what track you think is going to work best. Does it fit the pace of your video? So if you've got something that's very fast moving, you need a track that's very fast moving. If you're taking your time over a storytelling approach, for example, maybe you want it to be more um, gradual and, and um, ambient, maybe. Is it distracting? Goes back to the point. If you have a a really either heavy rock or 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 big you know dance music track in the background, it might just be a little bit distracting for your audience. And um, how will your audience react? So you know, not to as we mentioned this in some of the breakout groups, not to, not to stereotype too much, but if you're targeting finance directors or lawyers, um, the kind of music and the kind of script you'll write will be different from if you were trying to target. You know, a, a startup in the tech sector or a creative agency. So, um, the, the approach depends on who your audience is. And do not choose a track with a vocal, um, because your vo you're gonna your voice is gonna be on the track. So you can't, and it's easy enough just to, to to exclude those within the search criteria whenever you're looking for it. Um, it's just for fun, really. Uh, most of the this is a, a pie chart which shows um, the time we spend on our video project. Um, always, always choosing music takes an inordinate amount of time, and anybody doing video will tell you the same. What I tend to do, actually, because the libraries are so extensive, what I tend to do, sad as it is, is, is turn the stock music sites on, on a, open them up on a couple of tabs, let the stuff play, and when I hear one that I like, um, fire it into a playlist and call it something, whether it's you know, suitable for a sector or suitable for a particular customer. It just makes the, the process a little bit easier whenever you down to um, uh, find it out. So um, it, it, it will take, it's quite, I enjoy doing it, but I like music anyway. Um, it, it does take a bit of time, this, this part. The next section is the stock footage, which I know is probably of, of most interest to some of you. And I'm conscious we're running over a little bit here, but um, this is an, an important one that I think it's worth spending a few minutes on. Similarly with the royalty free music, there are lots and lots of resources available. Pexels video is probably the best free resource there is. Pexels do stock photographs as well, and they're also very, very good. So if you're looking for static images as well as video, it's a very, very good resource, and you should have a look at it. Videvo is another one. Um, they do have some clips available free. Most of them are paid or premium ones. Pay as you go services then would be Videvo, Shutterstock, which you've probably all heard of, and, and which is Getty Images and Film Pack. We have subscriptions to Videvo and Film Pack. And what we'd be suggesting to you again, similarly with the stock music, have a look at those sites, find the images that you want, put the, the, the URLs into a Word document for us. And whenever we come around to the one-to-one -one sessions, we can go through them. And if they make the cut into the final video, then we can we can download them, send you the files, um, and you're, you'll, you'll be free to use. Um, just to give you an example, this is from Pexels, which is a free resource. So I just did a bit. You remember I talked at the first session about you know if you'd ever been backpacking or traveling, you know highlight that as part of your experience. And um, I just went on to Pexels and put a very quick search term of Australia in there. Um, and you'll see at the top left, you know there's. 1,260 photos, 315 videos. Um, you know, and given that you're, you'll need a two or three second clip if you want to talk about Australia. So you can see the one on the left is Sydney Opera. Um, you'll see even the other searches. 
above that are sort of related to it. So you you can see the, the volume of, of information that's there for you. We talked about musical instruments. Um, if you had experience playing a musical instrument, so there you are. I just put piano videos into um, or piano into, into Pexels, and uh, there's 792 videos of people playing the piano on there. Now, you know, people watching your video don't know that's not you, because all you can see is hands. So use them. They're, that's what they're there for. Um, mountain walking. There's a mountain walk video that, um, from Vidivo. Uh, which you will have access to through our subscription. Um, but again, I put in mountain walk in the video and there were 19,500 different clips of people walking up mountains. And again, where they show your feet or where they, you know, they don't know it's not you. Um, so whether mountains are particularly big, they might know it's not here. But, um, you know, that, that's what, just an example. Again, on Pexel, on video, there's Australia searched and there's, 1291 clips just with that broad search of Australia. Um, you want to get something that's immediately identifiable as Australia, so things like the, the ones along the top there aren't necessarily the ones on Pexels actually that showed Sydney Opera House, for example. I mean, everybody knows that land. Rugby, so we've talked about a sport, if you've got a sport, if you've any sporting experience. Rugby on Verivo, there's 48 different clips of rugby. People kicking a rugby ball, going over the posts, shots of different rugby stadiums, and it's the same for Whatever sport you put on there, you will you will definitely find it. Okay, so what we will do in the um, what I will do in advance of the one to one sessions is I will send over the the, the links to the, the sites that we have the subscriptions to, and whenever Jackie or Brian is sending out the information about the one to one sessions, um, you'll have those links, and then you'll be able to do a little bit of work in advance to go on and uh, have a look at some clips and have a look at some of the, the, the music that you'd, that you'd like to use. Okay, now we're gonna to touch a little bit on editing your video again. Most, this'll be a very, this is always better done as a one-on-one -on -one thing. So the majority of this will be done as part of the one-to-one -one session and the questions we'll answer during this. I'm afraid um, from my perspective, um, there's only one show in town for me and it's anything that Apple do. Um, iMovie, for anybody who uses an iPhone or has an Apple laptop, is by far, in my opinion, the best free editing software there is. Um, so if you are using an iPhone, or preferably editing is always done better on a laptop or, or a desktop, but if you have a Mac or an Apple laptop or, or an, a phone, worst, worst, worst case, um, I would suggest you use iMovie. Um, because I'm such an Apple advocate, my experience of using others doesn't tend to be that great. Um, I've highlighted a screenshot there of, a, of an article from a website called Uberlo, which lists the 25 best free editing software programs in 2021. There are a lot of them suitable for Android and, and Windows systems and stuff as well. So um, the best one is probably number four on the list there is DaVinci Resolve. Um, as with any of the editing packages, takes a little bit of figuring out to know how to do it properly. DaVinci is actually used in for production of some pretty major movies. Um, iMovie is, is the most intuitive of, of the lot probably, but I understand if you don't have an Apple device, that's not open to you. Uh, but again, we can have a chat around that at the, at the sessions. Um, there's also, if any of you use Canva as a graphic design package, there is the option of creating of, of, of creating video clips, of uploading your self-recorded video clips to Canva and, and using Canva to edit your video, which is probably a, a very quick and easy way of doing it. And I can walk you through that on the one-to-ones as well. Okay, in terms of preparation for the one-to-one -one sessions, then what we need you to do is, as close as possible, finalize your script. Um, prepare some storyboard ideas. Some Again, we're not expecting it to be an absolutely final nailed on storyboard, but I'd be interested to see for those one-to-one -one sessions. In order for me to be able to give you the best value from that session is, because you know you, the story you want to tell and you know the resources that you have access to, um, and you know your personality obviously better than I do. So, so the initial ideas, whether they end up being the end ones, will give me a good steer on, on, on where I can help the most, if you like. Create a short list of music options from Soundstripe or Filmpack. Um, create a short list of stock footage resources from Pexels, 
a video or a film pack um, and make a decision on the kind of editing package that you're thinking about using um, and then we can um, we can take a we, we can get those one-to-one -one sessions I'm happy to do those one-to-one -one sessions as quickly or not as you think you need in order to get that information together so um, what I'm thinking at the minute is there's a fair bit of work to do with that so we'd I'd be happy looking at that week beginning on the 7th of June to get a few of them scheduled um, and, and take it from there really so okay um as always thanks peter that was a um, really useful session um and hopefully the students i mean i obviously i didn't go into the breakout rooms so um you're in there so hopefully um uh, you guys um who've been on the session today find that useful being able to share get feedback from each other and get feedback from peter today and it's helped you formulate more of an idea of where you want to go um, with your videos. Um, the one-to-one -one GS, will, what we'll do is we will, can you just make sure that um, I have your email addresses, okay, um, for the one-to-ones. Um, I think I should have all of them because I did email you all with the links here, so, so we've obviously got them because you're here today. Um, so yeah, what we'll do is when Peter um, sends through the information to help you for you to prepare for your one to one, we'll send that out. Um, and then, Peter, what way do you want to work it? Do you want the student just to come back to you directly to book a one to one? Do they need I think so. I mean, I think given the number, given the, yeah, I think given the numbers we're talking about, Jackie. I mean, I think um, the coming back to me individually is probably okay at the minute. I haven't quite. Yeah figured out the technology at Calendly or anything yet but yeah um, well I, I, I think that's probably I haven't I have I'm, I'm too tight to pay for the the the, um, the 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 paid for package with Calendly so that what, what I'm able to do is restricted by the fact that I only have a free one so. no no that's fine look we'll work we'll work that out and as I say um you know you don't necessarily have to jump in and have your one-to-one -one next week no, you know? absolutely not. So no, that's that's fine. Um, so if it takes a couple of weeks or a few weeks to get your stuff together before you're ready for um a one to one, that's absolutely that that that's works. absolutely fine. Okay. Um. So the the one to ones have already been included in Peter's package, so that's that's grand. So you just whenever you're ready, um. So that's grand. Um, uh, guys, any questions that you have on today or anything that you need to do? That just like we're here. Feel free to share your, cam your camera and sound if you want to. No, no questions. So everybody knows what they're doing. Um, Jilly, you've got your sound on there. Sorry, now I was just double checking. You're going to send us the links with um, the sound stripe and yes. things on it, so you will be able to access it through that. That's okay. It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And as I said, you you can access and search the databases without an account. Um, once you find something that you like, if you just copy the URL file and their Word document, then when we go through the one-to-one -one sessions, we can. I'd be able to jump in. And, and and download those tracks for you and then send them to you um, so, you're, so you'll have them to use in your videos yeah um Letitia yes you can also have the recording yeah that'll be up on the website and on the uh careers at Ulster YouTube channel okay as are all the recordings so absolutely um okay well look guys thank you so much for joining us today um just to um, just to highlight a couple of the other sessions that are um, coming up that you might be interested in, um, we've got this afternoon the NI Senior Women's uh, Football Team. Um, they've uh, done something historic. They've made it to the Euros 2022. I'm not even into football, and uh, I have to say, 
Oh, actually, it's at the same time as our Peter. You can't go to it, and I can't go to it because it's the same time as I, our. I did, no, I did notice that earlier. I was jump. I was. I was actually on the Future Skills website this morning, thinking I'm going to go to that, and then I was like, but "It'll be recorded." Can't. Could you just play this recording at the next session? Huh? You just play this recording for the next session, and I'll go. Yeah, we just play it, and we'll go to the other. We'll go to the football. <laughs> um, no, we'll we'll record. You know, we'll have to watch the recording of that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we do have um, unlock your future with David Mead um, tomorrow afternoon at half one, and he is um, what's called a mentalist, and he is fantastically entertaining, he um, and he's talking about unlocking your future. So I think that should be really good. For those of you who are into um, or who are interested in maybe supporting your friends, um, there's an interesting session tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock to 11 called um, Supporting a Friend's Mental Health. And it's led by Katie Matthews from Mind Tribe. And she is just a stunning presenter. She is awesome. Um, so that's really good, especially if you do know that you've got friends who are struggling at the minute. Um, how do you support them? How do you develop your awareness and manage the signs um, or, or check the signs? So that's tomorrow um, at 10 a.m. And the last one I want to just draw your attention to is actually coming up now at 12 o'clock today. Um, and it is creative problem solving um, using a design thinking approach. And that's by Big Motive. Um, and they're all thinking about how do you um, successfully tackle problems and solve them? Um, what is a design thinking approach? So it's a very organized, structured way of um, creatively solving problems. And that could be a really useful skill for a workplace and something actually that would be quite nice to put in a CV if, if you're good at being creative about problem, about bringing solutions. There was a there's a report there from the World Economic Forum actually um, was it last year early last year that mm -hmm. uh, the three biggest skills employers are looking for are creativity critical thinking and there was one more I can never communication. remember Commu uh, probably communication yeah but that mm -hmm. critical thinking I mean I know when we when I was working in the engineering business one of the whole we did a lot of psychometric testing of applicants when they were applying for us and and one of the things you were looking for was that critical thinking problem solving. Mm -hmm. Um, because everybody's jobs move so quickly. I mean, most of the jobs in the UK, most of the most popular jobs in the UK at the minute didn't exist 10 years ago. That's true. So, so what you, seven out of the top 10 jobs in the UK at the minute didn't exist 10 years ago. Yep. So how can you train for them? Um, exactly. So what you need is people who can adapt quickly and yeah. can problem solve, because then it doesn't matter what job they're doing, they find a way to make it work. <laughs> exactly. I oh, know, and employers love that. Like, yeah. they just love yeah. that all. Absolutely. Okay, well look, guys, thanks very much. Um, any questions, you know, you can email myself um, uh, and ask and we'll send you through all the information you need for your one-to-ones. I'll include um, my email in that as well, just in case that people want to get in, get in touch, you know, directly with me, obviously to set up the one-to-ones, but if they have any questions, I'll answer that too. And connect with Peter and myself and, and Brian on LinkedIn as Definitely. well, Definitely. guys. Yeah. All right. Okay, listen, let you go. Have okay. a good rest of the day and I'll see you all soon.